I'm Nick Johnson, and I'm studying the different ethnic groups in America. This video book reports on the most Hispanic cities in the United States. I hope you enjoy it. Before we begin, we need to first establish exactly what a Hispanic person is. For our definition of Hispanic, we're going to include all Americans who identify as being from countries that speak Spanish. I mean, that's how the government defines it. Therefore, the following countries are from which Hispanic people are from. These include many countries in the Caribbean, South America, Spain, and of course, Mexico. Now, Hispanic is different than Latino. Latinos are people from Latin American countries. Those are the following. You can see them there. You'll notice that many of the countries are the same. That means you can be both Hispanic and Latino. You're from a Spanish-speaking Latin American country. But for this video, we're going to particularly talk about cities with the highest Hispanic populations. The Hispanic population has grown in America, and since the early 2000s, Hispanic growth has outpaced that of every other race, and Hispanics have become the largest minority in the country. Currently, Hispanics make up about 17% of the American population, or about one in every six residents. In this video, we're going to talk about some Hispanic history, bring up some modern Hispanic stereotypes, and look at which cities have the highest percentage of Hispanic residents. There will likely not be any surprises. And before you freak out, I did a video on the whitest and blackest cities too, so I'm not picking on anybody. There are very few personal opinions in this report. Most are facts. Okay, so let's begin our report on the most Hispanic cities in the United States. Now we're going to begin our book report on the most Hispanic cities in the United States in East Los Angeles. Now East LA is actually the only place we're going to talk about that isn't an actual city. It's a census designated place within the city of Los Angeles. However, this region has the highest concentration of Hispanics in the country at more than 97%. So it's worth talking about. East LA has 126,000 people. So it's actually a pretty populated place. It's east of downtown Los Angeles. Actually, lots of South and East LA are now Hispanic. Here's a breakdown of many other parts of LA, which are almost 100% Hispanic too. Now this whole part of Los Angeles was mostly black up until the mid 1990s, but it was so dangerous and overrun with crime and poverty that a lot of the black population fled this part of LA and the Hispanic populations moved in. And now this part of LA is more Hispanic than it was black. More than 80% of East LA speak Spanish at home. And as a whole, Los Angeles is almost 50% Hispanic. There's many notable Hispanics from East LA. Oscar De La Hoya is from here. He was a gold medal winning boxer from the 1992 Olympics. Jaime Escalante, a famous school teacher, is from here. And former LA mayor Antonio Villarigosa hails from East Los Angeles. Some pretty good company. Ordena mi amo. Quiero algo fantástico. Our first major city that's a majority Hispanic is San Antonio, Texas, where 64% of residents are Hispanic. The number of Hispanics in San Antonio has increased by 20% in the last decade alone. For comparison, our least Hispanic city in the country is Spokane, Washington, which is only 5% Hispanic. Now, being a border state, it's not a surprise that the Hispanic population is so high here. 40% of the whole state of Texas is Hispanic. One Texas state demographer estimated that 11% of the Hispanic population in San Antonio is not a legal citizen of the United States. Now we're going to talk about more on the impact of the Mexico border when we get to Texas cities with an even higher percentage of Hispanics. Chef Johnny Hernandez and artist Cruz Ortiz are prominent Hispanics who were born in and still live here. Politician Julian Castro also hails from San Antonio. Now one stereotype of Hispanics, according to Wikipedia, is that they're dangerous, drug traffickers, drug users, violent, and gangbangers. In addition, studies have shown that half of Latino TV characters are portrayed as criminals. Is that out of touch with reality? According to the FBI's latest crime numbers, 52% of homicide offenders were black, 28% were white, 15% were Hispanic, and 4% were from other races. So the Hispanic population is not as violent as the two other major races. However, when it comes to gang membership, the Hispanic population far exceeds the other races in terms of percentage of membership. At one point not too long ago, half of all gangbangers were Hispanic. 11% of gang members are white. 
Maybe they should give all the Hispanic gangbangers Nerf guns instead of real guns. And let them fight it out that way. A gran distancia. Sorprende los con disparos secretos que salen una y otra vez y otra vez. Acaba con todos con el poder nerf de disparo secreto. Moving on, we come to our eighth most Hispanic city in America, which is Miami, Florida. Now, while a majority of the Hispanics in LA and San Antonio are Mexican, most of the Hispanics here in Miami are not Mexican. This chart shows that almost 54% of all Hispanics in Miami are from Cuba. 18% are South American, 13% are from Central America, and the Mexican population is only 3.4%. The Hispanic influence in Miami is strong. There's an area of Miami known as Little Havana, where you'll find festivals, a colorful street life, and restaurants with authentic Cuban food. Unlike other Hispanic registered voters in the USA, most Cuban Americans identify as Republican. 58% of Cubans lean red, while 28% lean blue. Alternatively, two-thirds of Hispanics as a whole who are not Cuban identify as Democrats. The Hispanic culture in general is very diverse and passionate. You can't summarize what it means to be Hispanic in a short paragraph used to extend the length of this video, but according to one sort of reputable Hispanic website, to the Hispanic community, there are five core values that tie every Hispanic together, and they're referred to as the five Fs. Family, fiesta, faith, food, and football. That means they have strong family ties, they celebrate often, they attend church regularly, food is the center of everything, and they love soccer. If you look at the world's top 10 ranked soccer nations, three of them are Hispanic nations. Of course, there's many things that Hispanics aren't good at, like American football and hockey. Okay, that's not funny. That's not funny at all. Those are serious sports, people. Hello? Back to California we go. Last time we were here, we were in the city of Los Angeles. Now we visit Los Angeles County in the city of Pomona, which is on the city's far eastern fringes. Here, more than 70% of the population is Hispanic. Now I couldn't find a reason why there's such a large Hispanic population in Pomona, but my personal opinion is because of the city's large number of amazing Mexican restaurants. Now earlier we mentioned the population growth of Hispanics in the United States. They're the fastest growing demographic by race. You can see here that back in 2000, Hispanics made up 12.6% of the population, and now it's 18% of the population. All other races have increased except the white population. While Hispanics are the fastest growing race, the demographic is growing at a slower rate than in the early 2000s because of new immigration laws and a lower fertility rate. So the migration rate's lower now than it was 20 years ago, and Hispanics, like everybody else, they're having less kids. Now that's interesting because I had always assumed the Hispanic population repopulated like bunnies. No cabe duda. Tiene una energía inagotable. Energizer. Energía que sigue, sigue y sigue. Did you know the home ownership rate for Hispanics is only 44%? I did not know that, Mappy, but I can see your chart. It looks like both the Hispanics and the black populations are both lagging when it comes to home ownership rates. Why is that? They make less money. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Esta y otras noticias hoy a las diez y media de la noche en este canal 2 en 24 horas. Uh, I don't know what he just said, but I don't think that guy likes you very much, Mappy. Don't go anywhere. We're not leaving California for a while. Our next stop is in Salinas, a city of 156,000 people in California's Central Valley. Now, unlike Pomona, this makes sense because Central California is one of the world's most productive agriculture regions. And, according to detailed data by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, nearly two-thirds of all farm laborers are Hispanic, and 57% of them are Mexican. Only 3% of farm laborers are black, and only 54% of farm laborers are U.S. citizens. So you can understand why Salinas has such a high Hispanic population. Here's an interesting study. When you look at divorce rates, it's clear that Asians stay married the most, and the black population divorces at the highest rate. Hispanics divorce at a rate slightly higher than the white population. The black population divorces at a rate three times higher than the Asian population does. Do telenovelas have an impact on divorce rates?
Well, we're going just down the road for our next most Hispanic city. Well, five hours and 11 minutes away. This is Santa Ana, a city in Orange County, California, where the population is 78.2% Hispanic. The New York Times recently wrote an article about Santa Ana's high Hispanic population. The article surmised that Santa Ana is the new face of California. 30 years ago, the Republican Party had guards at polling stations here in Santa Ana saying non-citizens were prohibited from voting, specifically targeting the Hispanic population. Today, Santa Ana has an all-Hispanic city council, and more than 25% of all Hispanic voters in the nation live in California. It's to the point now that things have switched so much politically that Hispanic lawmakers now say they have to be sensitive to non-Hispanic voters. This article points out that illegal immigrants in California are entitled to a driver's license and their kids can get state-funded health insurance. The historic downtown of Santa Ana isn't known as 4th Street. Everybody here calls it Calle Cuatro. The sidewalks along Santa Ana are filled with Hispanic-themed shopping destinations and restaurants and service industries. Vendors sell Chiritos and Tosa Locos. Here in Santa Ana, Dia de los Muertos is a bigger deal than the 4th of July is. But you can bet they still blow off fireworks for both of them. It's loud here, fellas. Since we're talking about California, we should talk about COVID. The CDC says Hispanics are 2.3 times more likely to die from COVID and 1.3 times more likely to get COVID. For the restaurant de Mexicano de Alberto. Tacos. En la ruta 96 en Pueblo. Vamos abajo, tenemos unos tacos geniales. Es el restaurante Mexicano de Alberto. Okay, so we're leaving California for good now. We're going to spend a lot of time in the great state of Texas moving forward. Here in El Paso, our first stop. The Hispanic population makes up 81.7%, making it the fourth most Hispanic city in the nation. It makes sense that Texas has such a high population of Hispanics since it's right next door to Mexico, and it's a gateway into the U.S. for Mexicans as well as Central Americans. There's also a large number of people from El Salvador here in El Paso, a city which used to be called El Paso de Norte, or the passageway to the north. The culture of El Paso, understandably, has a strong Hispanic influence, they celebrate the Fiesta de las Flores here. They celebrate the Amigo Air Show here. That's an air show where the planes fly around. And of course, you have Tex-Mex, which is gross. That begs the question, are Hispanics less healthy than other Americans based on their diet and exercise habits? According to data, Hispanics are slightly more obese than the rest of the country, but we're all pretty overweight except for the Asians. The black population is most likely to report physical inactivity, followed by Pacific Islanders and then Hispanics, where 31% don't meet exercise standards. And then you have the Asians again, all exercised out. One study asked Hispanics why they don't exercise enough. They reported a lack of time, they're very tired, and a lack of self-discipline. <laughs> well, welcome to the club. You're certainly not alone there, my Hispanic friends. I like cereal and candy the most. I know you do, Juan. I can clearly tell. Here's something that you'll enjoy. This is just for you. Sí, lo hice. El nuevo sabor natural de uva de Fruit Loops de Kellogg's. Probémoslo con naranja, limón y cereal. ¡Está delicioso! Nuevo sabor de uva de Fruit Loops de Kellogg's. Parte de un desayuno nutritivo. ¡Qué buena idea! ¡Sabor uva! ¡Pruébalo ya! <risa> Mire, amiguito, a mí no me toma usted el pelo. ¿eh? Pues, si no vengo a comprar pelucas, ¿qué pasa aquí? We're going to remain in Texas again. This is McAllen, a place you may not have heard of before. It's actually a big place though. There's 140,000 people here. The Maquila Dora economy and NAFTA really helped propel the growth here in McAllen. If you don't know what a Maquila Dora is, it's a manufacturing factory popular in Mexico and in Central America too. It's sort of a sweatshop where they pay really cheap wages. You know, all those manufacturing jobs that we don't have here in America that are being done just across the border of Mexico for one sixth the cost. In cities like McAllen, they need laborers to distribute and process all the goods coming in from these sort of Mexican sweatshops. Hispanics do these US-based jobs as well. Now the question remains, do Hispanics steal jobs? Meaning, are they stereotypical job stealers? Mostly no. They take jobs other Americans don't want. They work cheaply and they work very hard. Most Americans wouldn't labor in the hot fields for 12 hours a day for under the table payment, nor would they clean all those hotel rooms for crummy wages. That 
that's how they do it so fast? Good old Senor Rigio. Okay, so we're briefly going to leave Texas, and then we're going to go to Florida one more time. This is Hialeah, Florida, which is a really large, dangerous, and poor area just outside of Miami. Here, the Hispanic population is nearly 96%. It's kind of known to be the arrival destination for many newly immigrated Cubans. Some would call it a ghetto. Now earlier we talked about the political scene here in Florida and how the Hispanic population votes in ways that make it harder to predict the outcomes of elections. That's just what we saw in the 2020 presidential election when far more Hispanics voted for Trump than many expected. This article in the Wall Street Journal points out that despite the claims that the U.S. will be a minority majority in 2050, it's far more complicated than that. We can't assume the political landscape will shift liberal because Hispanics are voting more conservative than ever before. And as more and more Hispanics come of age, they become more assimilated into the U.S. culture, making them not as likely to vote blue as the early arrivers did. I mean, that's just what happened after the white ethnic groups first arrived in the country a long time ago. They got assimilated too. And also, interracial marriages are becoming more commonplace, especially between whites and Hispanics. The article says, the surge in mixing across ethno-racial lines is one of the most important and unheralded developments of our time. Today, more than 10% of all U.S. babies have one parent who is non-white or Hispanic and one who is white and not Hispanic. We're entering into a new era of mixed backgrounds. And when the census allowed Americans to begin checking off more than one racial box, liberal rights groups began to get worried since it meant it might dilute the numerical strength of minorities. We're a mixed bag, we are. You can't put us in a checkbox any longer. As the Hispanic population continues to assimilate and make inroads into the U.S. culture and economy, they will likely shift towards a more conservative mindset. We're back in Texas one more time. This is Laredo, the most Hispanic city in the country, where 96% of the city's 251,151 people is a Hispanic. Laredo is right across the Mexican border along the Rio Grande River, just across from Nuevo Laredo in Mexico. The list of notable Hispanics born in Laredo is very long, and the city's turned out many well-known athletes, musicians, and politicians. One article written by a Laredo newspaper talked about how the community views its Hispanic demographic. Many Hispanics there decry the city's large number of Hispanic residents, saying they feel there's too many Mexican restaurants, and they don't like hearing Spanish spoken at the local CVS. One Hispanic Democrat said, what country are we in? Another complained about the Hispanics getting free benefits while she pays taxes. Anyway, I'm sure there's other viewpoints, but the reporter didn't include them. Okay, so there we go. The most Hispanic cities in America. I hope you learned something about our Hispanic friends and neighbors. I sure did. And as our country continues to grow demographically and culturally, we're going to see a lot of changes that we can't yet predict. But for now, go out and grab a burrito and a taco and celebrate the best food on the planet. Now take it away, Mexican Muppets. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.